Hi, it's time for our next exam. So I wanted to talk for just a couple of minutes here um, about some general concepts, general suggestions, and then we'll get into the topics in a little bit. Um, first of all, the, the practice exam this time, I was trying to get every different possible type of question you could be asked, but there are so many different variations. So I tried to put a good sample on the practice exam, and you've got the solutions there as well. But you need to be sure to try other examples too, the homework, um, the examples in the online lessons, if you haven't figured it out already, the examples I'm going to ask are going to be, if not the same, very similar to homework or the ones in the online lessons. So don't depend just on one or the other. Um, I like to mix it up and have both. So look at the practice exam, but don't depend on it. Um, and second, about um, the answers that you write. There's a lot of things you can do with technology here, which is great, and that's no problem at all. However, for the exam itself, you have to be very careful because if you make a mistake and you don't write anything down about what you did, I can't give you any credit unless it's obvious what your error was. Some, some answers, it's like, well, it's obvious they, they went to the right when they should have gone to the left or something like that. But other errors, it's really hard for me to know what you did, and so it's hard for me to give partial credit. So what you may want to do this time, if you use technology, is either clearly state the commands that you used in your technology, Excel or StatCrunch, or if you're using a calculator, um, I don't have directions for that, but some of you may. Um, or um, for the technology portion, you can copy and paste your supporting evidence, like um, the output from a StatCrunch calculation. You can copy and paste that in the supporting evidence and print that off. And then in your exam, for problem number eight, just make a note, here's my answer, see supporting evidence number eight. Uh, and that way I can give you partial credit if you're incorrect. If your answer is correct, I'm going to assume that you didn't just get it coincidentally. It's almost impossible to get correct answers coincidentally here. So just wanted to mention that um, as something going into this. Also, if you like using the tables, your little old school like to use the tables, the normal tables, uh, t-tables, etc., that is fine as well. Uh, I will provide them with the exam and you can just request them. Um, you don't have to use them. You can do all of this with technology, but if you'd like to use the tables, just request them when you go to the testing center. So let's talk a little bit, oh, got a phone call here. Let's talk a little bit about the, the questions. It'll be right after I answer this, but you won't even tell that there's a, there's a gap in time. I'm, I'm rambling. All right, so we're here in the exam through review file in D2L, and we're just going to kind of hit some of the key concepts, tell you very clearly some questions that you will be asked and others that you need to know. You know, there'll be some selection. Obviously, there can't be every single topic on here. So let's start at the beginning. Um, just about the normal distribution. I always like to have a few questions that are just kind of conceptual. Do you understand the normal distribution? Uh, that the mean is in the middle, that there are about three standard deviations each way until the end. That area represents probability. Uh, this last one is crucial. We had some questions emailed and in the discussion board about what is Z sub alpha? How do you find that? And so I really recommend you review that where alpha is the area. Don't make the rookie mistake of saying, well, Z sub, you know, 0 0.02 means 0 0.02 is z. No, 0 0.02 is the area to the right. It's the probability. Um, finding normal probabilities. This is a typical, like I'll describe a situation and say, okay, find the probability of finding, of having, uh, what was some height of less than 60 inches, whatever, something like that. So there are some examples in the practice exam and there are some examples in the online lesson. You can use any of these three methods. You can do it um, old school using a normal table kind of by hand. You can use a calculator if you want. Um, just write down which command you're using or you can use StatCrunch or Microsoft Excel. Uh, then in reverse, finding the values of a normally distributed random variable where you're given a probability or given an area. And so these, a lot of people struggle with these, and I'm telling you, you're going to be asked one of these. So look at the practice exam. Uh, what was the practice exam question about? Oh, something about the height of one-year-old boys. That's this type of question where you're given a probability. In that case, you're told which percentile it's in uh, and asked to find the value. Uh, normal probability plots. You will be asked to find one of, to create one of these, so be sure you know how to do it. If you haven't studied this and don't know right offhand what a normal probability plot is, trust me, you don't know what it is. So, unless you're really familiar with it, 
be sure to practice this. Look at the directions, learn how to make a normal probability plot. Uh, the, the distribution of both the sample mean and sample proportions, these are chapter 8. Um, we'll have probably one question from each. One of the keys for distribution of the sample mean is, if we scroll over here, you will be asked, what is the probability that a sample has a mean more or less than some value? Uh, that's the reason you'll, way you'll know it's for here. So the standard deviation in that case, the standard deviation of the sample mean, is the population standard deviation over the square root of n. So this is chapter section 8.1. The distribution of the sample proportion is section 8.2. Um, and you're, I've, the, there are a couple of common wordings here. What is the probability that whatever percent have, whatever quality, or whatever percent or less, what is the probability that x you know, out of x, y, have this or, or less, something like that. So look at those. There should be at least one question like that on the practice exam as well. Um, confidence intervals. I make a note here, you'll be given the formulas, but if you're good with technology, then you don't need the formulas. If you're doing it by hand, um, I will give you the formulas and tables. You can do it by hand, or you can just use StatCrunch or Microsoft Excel. I have two comments here. First of all, um, be sure you know which interval to use. So I encourage you to maybe try some more homework problems in 9.5, maybe try some more similar examples, or go through the online examples in section 9.5 to help you choose which type of interval is it. Every semester I see somebody do some questions here where it's a completely unrelated interval to what the question is about. The question is about standard deviation and somebody does a confidence interval about the mean, and that wasn't even asked. So that's one thing. Second, um, you need to write down what you did. If you used StatCrunch, which menu did you use? What numbers did you put in? If you used Microsoft Excel, what command did you type in? You need to write that down. If your answer is wrong, you're not going to get any points because I'm not going to know how you came to that answer. So be sure to do that. Be sure to um, write down what you did. And I, as I noted in the, the video earlier, uh, you can also paste some information in the supporting evidence and print that off. So keep that in mind. Um, be sure to give justification. If your answer is right, I'm not too worried. I, it's not really easy to guess on these. But if your answer is wrong, you're not going to get any partial credit. And so don't be overconfident. Don't just assume, well, I know for sure this is right. Um, that usually doesn't end well. Be sure to write some justification. Uh, the last is about sample size necessary. We This was um, in both the mean and proportion in Chapter 9. You'll be given these formulas. You just have to know which one to apply and what to plug in. Uh, so those are in Chapter 9. Um, that's about it. If you have any particular questions uh, about the exam, feel free to send me an email or make a post in D2L. Be sure to try all of these things here. You're watching this video, so that's good. Review all the topics below. Click and follow some links. Do some examples. Uh, try the practice exam. This is crucial. I, I always boggles my mind when people haven't done these. So be sure. Try the practice exam and check with the solutions. And then if you're one who's going to be using formulas and tables, be sure to open this link and, and take a look at the, the information that you'll be given.